Well, good morning, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you somewhere between Austin and San Antonio, Texas, the second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coach and speaker in the world. So it occurred to me that um, speaking about the serenity prayer this morning and living it would probably be a bad idea on the road doing 70 miles an hour. So I made a decision that I would take you to somewhere serene. I'll kind of give you an idea of the surroundings here. Um, I've got this entrance to a community. Pretty cool wall that should block some of the road noise. And um, hope you guys can see that. Pretty stunning hill country out there. Beautiful place. Great place to have the serenity prayer. So let's talk about the serenity prayer really quickly here. How do you live the serenity prayer? Many people don't know this. Now, a lot of people that do know uh, where my journey began, uh, committed by the court system to the Texas State Hospital, dead and dying suicidal, uh, post-teen drug addict, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, all these different programs have this prayer that you may or may not be familiar with. And it, and it goes like this. It says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Let me say that again. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So let's talk about how do you actually live that? Because you know, there's a lot of folks that have an idea of, well, that's that's a cute little prayer there, Steve. And you know, uh, is that what I have to do to make it work? Like there's a, a formula, like a Rubik's cube, where you just figure out the formula and it works every time. Well, no, it doesn't work like that. Or you could be like George Costanza's dad. Serenity now! Serenity now! Well, he's all intense and stressed out, and that definitely does not activate it. You see, the thing about prayer is it's never intended to be a formula or a process that replaces relationship. Let me try that one more time. Prayer is never intended to be something that replaces relationship for process. So it's not about figuring out the formula so that stuff can happen. That's the dirty secret behind the secret. It's a formula to get stuff that eliminates the provider, the blesser, and the giver and focuses on the provision, the blessing, and the gift. So when we talk about living the serenity prayer, how does this activate in your life? Well, first of all, your trigger indicator normally should be that there's a lack of peace. So let's interchange serenity with peace. There's a lack of peace. Something happens that robs you of your peace and then causes you to start experiencing something negatively by way of a negative emotion or negative feeling. This negative emotion, negative feeling hits, that should be the trigger for you. At that point, if you chose to open relationship with this particular key called this particular prayer, God, Grant me the serenity. Let me have peace to accept what I cannot change, which by the way, people are included in that category. If you're waiting to have peace until he changes, until she changes, until my kids change, until my boss changes, until my situation, you will not be in a position of power to make the decision to change. You will be a victim of other people's actions and activities or lack thereof, which puts you in a place to not have any power to walk in peace. So God, grant me the, the peace to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can. Why is that important? Because making a change is not easy. It's simple, it's not easy. And it requires courage. Courage to walk sacrificially, not having your own needs met for a season until the results you believe are possible have an opportunity to show up. Because God's not mocked. What you sow, you're going to reap. You can't plant bananas and reap oranges. You're going to reap what you sow. You have to understand that's a principle of seed time and harvest. It's not a fun thing to say. It, it's the way that it is. It's the way the world works. You, you, people call it karma. What goes around comes around. So you understand what I'm saying? 
So when you when you pray that prayer, you, you, you want that trigger to be the lack of peace. When lack of peace comes, here's your key to unlock, not a prayer that gets stuff done, but to unlock an opportunity to connect with your loving Heavenly Father in relationship. This is just the key that unlocks the door in this instance for you to walk into this amazing palatial estate full of love and grace and kindness and mercy and wisdom. So when you say this, you know, God, grant me the serenity, the peace to accept the things I cannot change. The courage, because you will need the courage and the grit to change the things I can, which by the way is you. It's you. You can change you. And the wisdom to know the difference. What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Knowledge gives you the answers and helps you see all the dots. That's knowledge. That gives you the framework to work with. Wisdom is like turning the light on in a dark room and being able to see how the dots connect. And God is a God of wisdom. So let's just take a real life situation. Let's say it's a relationship issue between a husband and a wife. And there's a lack of peace because things that are going on in a relationship. Well, that prayer is a great key to unlock the door to deeper intimacy and relationship with him by, you know, God, give me peace in this situation um, to accept what I can't change. Now, you can accept what you can't change and be bitter and be angry and be frustrated and walk around tense and just become an overall garden variety tool in how you interact with other people. That ain't no good for you or anybody else to accept your circumstance or to accept what you can't change and not have peace. Do you see the defining difference? Lots of people accept crappy circumstances and you have no peace. Grant me the peace to accept the things I cannot change. This is something that cannot be changed and I have come to peace with it in this moment. Not from this point forward forever. Relationships are organic. They're ever changing, ever growing in this moment that I am triggered by a lack of peace. Grant me the peace to accept that I can't change. The courage to change what I can, the wisdom to know the So what I need right now, Father, is I need wisdom to know if this is something that I have the ability to be involved in change or if I do not. And if you do not have the ability or the capacity to create change in that situation, then being able to accept it with peace allows you to walk in a state of mind that does not hinder you or others around you from your own personal growth and development as you walk through that season. I heard a guy say recently, you know, God doesn't heal us all 100% of our issues. Sometimes he'll heal us 80% and then just surround us with a few good friends who will walk us through that, maybe for the rest of our lives, because we're designed for relationship. First with him, second with everybody else. So let's go over that one more time. What is the trigger that activates this key? It's just a key, it's not the solution. It's the key that opens the door to deeper relationship. The key is lack of peace. Something happens, I have lack of peace, all right? And I'm freaked out. That's when I can say, you know, Lord, give me the peace to accept what I can't change courage to change what I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Once you have that wisdom and understanding, then you're able to say, is this something I can change or is this not something I can change? Then you step into that courage to make the change. Here's what I know. You can't change people. You can only change you. And that's why you need courage because the heaviest lifting you're going to do in this life is working on yourself and the gray matter between your beautiful little ears. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. If this ministers to you or speaks to you, please feel free to share it with others and have a great weekend, guys.